I can promise you she's very inspiring, a very inspiring uh, expert, and her view on community health nursing is very interesting. I'm sure you will get a good inspiration. And in Slovenia, it's absolutely normal. She told me to have CHNs. Since around 20 years, they are introduced, and there are many. And she was one of the first ones. Um, so, one of the first community health nurses in Slovenia, and it happens by accident to you. You told me it was not really planned to uh, get in this, um, yeah, in this direction directly because it was at the beginning. And you have had an education as a nurse and then studied nursing and social care, got your master and worked in health center in Jubiljana. And in the meantime, the insight and the experience is about 20 years working in the health system and we are looking forward now to listening to your presentation and learning something about how easy it could be to be a community health nurse and to do it in real life. And I would like to introduce to you Meta Zitnik. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much, Miss Kluge. Uh, thank you to the organizers of, uh, for having me here for the second time in a row. Um, it's quite an honor. Um, I'm looking forward for the third time. But just a quick correction. I'm not the first uh, one of the first one in community nursing, but the second role that I will show you afterwards. Because community nursing is quite old in Slovenia. Uh, and because my title is the scope of community nursing, I have to take you back in time to explain stuff. So please buckle up. We are traveling back in time. Mm -hmm. We have some technical problems because you will see I have a quite a special machine for you. Community nursing is uh, really old, as I mentioned, and I want to really take you back in time. And I hope, because this is a very special machine, because nobody saw it till this day, uh, that's why we have some technical problems. Let's see, see if it works. It doesn't want to work. Because I built a special time machine when I will take you back in time. And it's taking, it will take you back in time, hopefully. If not, we will stay here, so I'm really sorry for it. Um, but if it will work, it will be quite a crazy journey. So I hope that you are all buckled in, because we're going back in time into 1886. This is where our really famous nurse, Angela Bushkin, was born. Why is she so famous? She was one of the first nurses in Slove Slovenia, which graduated in Wien to gain her diploma for a nursing. This is like really back, 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 back in time. And she was basically also one of the first nurses in Yugoslavia when she was called, uh, it, there's not a good translation, but she was called like a field caring nurse. So she was basically a first glimpse of community nursing in Slovenia. And this is a really old practice in Slovenia. That's why she's so important and that's why I really want to take you back in time. But let's see, maybe it will work out everything fine. Technic crew, they do their best. Otherwise, yes, it's now working can I now. Try? Can you maybe switch it? No, it worked before. Ja, that's live, meine Damen und Herren. So ist das. Wir können auch die Frage heute zuerst machen. That's a disaster <laughs> management. <laughs> now. <laughs> okay. Well, let's see. Another try. Another try. Hopefully, 
I maybe uh, maybe it's the me, uh, it's me, it's the problem because I'm a little bit more old age. I brought the PowerPoint presentation, and I learned that here in Berlin, you you already use uh, like PDF files and stuff. This is not how I cooperate. Okay, <laughs> that's why. Just I'm sorry. As you mentioned, uh, Frau Kruger, um, I've been a nurse for 20 years, so it has to show <laughs> somewhere. No problem. So we have to decide, perhaps. Liebe Technik, funktioniert es? Daumen hoch, no? Daumen runter? Yes, no? Yes. No? What would you like to do? Um, can you maybe just show me on the screen all the slides that I can go forward? That yeah. Would be easy. But I promise you, it was a really cool presentation. Everything it is. Like I saw moving it before. And uh, just scroll it down a little bit. OK. OK. Because I was so proud of myself of, for thinking of it. OK, just go a little bit. Or just show me the fourth slide, and then you can just click, yeah, like this. So uh, yes, I was mentioning um, about uh, our first nurse, uh, it was, she was born 1886, and she was one of the first nurses um, to be named like a community care nurse back then. But she was, uh, she was um, really brave and famous to do so. Um, I wanted to show you pictures today from my uh, personal archives. Uh, these are pictures from, one is also black and white, because my mother uh, yeah, that's Angela Bushkin. Uh -huh. Maybe just the things that they are moving are not functioning well. Um, maybe we can go a slide forward. This is, these are pictures from my personal archives. You see also in black and white technique. Uh, these are pictures from my mother. She's the lady on the other picture. She's been a nurse, for, a community nurse of 40 years. And they had a car. This is, it was called Ficho in Yugoslavia. I don't know how you called it, but it was Ficho in Slovenia. Because the community nurses also nowadays, they, they have cars. Sometimes they are uh, bought from the community health center or from the municipality where they work for. Or some, because this is a really uh, independent and uh, also sometimes self-employed role, they have to have their own car. But in the cities, because um, I was working as a community nurse for three to four years at the beginning of my career, and I left a piece of my heart there, but life wanted something else for me. That's why I didn't stay community nurse. Um, but some ladies who are working in cities, uh, they are using public transportations, uh, bikes, um, and also cars. But it's, it's different from the rural area where you need a car. And I'm, a, I'm not a city girl, I come from a countryside, and that's why these pictures are like they are. Uh, can we go on, please? Um, there are, there's still one picture. Where is um, my son with uh, my nurse, my community nurse, when he was first time being bathed? It was done by my community nurse, Eva. She was also my colleague when I work, and this is my son. He's now a little bit bigger as he was here. So they are basically taking care of people from, you saw, birth, being pregnant, birth till the end of the day, when we are dying. Um, the norm for um, community nurse is around 2,500 inhabitants in specific region or area. It can vary a little bit plus minus, but this is, this is where the limit is, 205,000 uh, people per one community nurse. Um, some, it's a really independent role, as I mentioned. Uh, some nurse can be also self-employed, but they are still uh, part of public health care. Um, the scope is really big, what they are capable to do. Can we go two slides forward, maybe? Another one? And another one? Thank you very much. You're very helpful. This is the scope what they can do. It's quite a lot of things to be done. And not just that. We know that uh, being in hospital is like a, it became like a really short period of time. People are being operated and sent at home right away. So they are, so they are coming home really sick and a lot of things hanging out of them. So also those community nurses are very well uh, skilled 
to deal with all those things and stuff. And they are um, also connecting. They're like part of the community where they are uh, staying or working. They are connecting with social care, with primary cares. Because working for 2,500 uh, people, you can imagine, they have different doctors. Uh, and you need to co contact all these people uh, if there are different problems. Um, social care is really important. Uh, and this uh, team working, as Mr. Everest mentioned, is really important. You can do all on your own. That's why we need to connect as team. And, uh, and, if, and we, if we are talking about uh, patient-centered care, this is it. We are all professionals standing around the patient and working hand in hand. And this is a really good example in Slovenia and really old one. One slide forward, please. But because it's an old, already old practice, we have to adapt a little bit because everything is changing in life and li in cha change is the only constant in life they also need to adapt a little bit. And we are now on the, the edge of some new implementations in practice. And one which I really want to uh, mention uh, is uh, a really extended and really integrated uh, prevention being done uh, from community nurses. This is what we are striving for now to expand a little bit. But where we are um, uh, uh, taking this prevention from is the second role that I want to mention. And now I would like to invite you again, if my PowerPoint was working, to my special time machine. You see, you see everything is moving. And then we would travel a little bit forward in time in 2011. And in 2011, we started with one special, it was just a project. It was just a project. It was called model practice. The first uh, in Slovenia, because we have a really strong and old primary care, it was just Mr. General Practitioner working with his nurse. There were just two of them. Uh, the nurse was basically a uh, high school graduated, because we have high school for nurses also in Slovenia, and she had this uh, level of education. And they were working together since ever. And of course, because we are uh, needs of people are different, bigger, and we are evolving, we saw the necessity of additional person. And that was the third lady, and that was the uh, nurse uh, with uh, the uh, university level of education, registered nurse. And of course, our outcome, we wanted to be health, healthier, happier, and better treated patient. That was the, our vision. But, let's go forward, you can imagine that not everybody was happy about it. If you, we don't like changes, you know, we like to stick with the same things that we know because it's safer. And of course we have a lot of those faces. In Slovenia also there was a lot of people who didn't believe that this is possible. Uh, there was a lot of questions like you have here in Germany now because of you want to do something uh, with your community care uh, project. Is it possible? Who is going to pay? Is it safe? Are they going to do my job now? And then we realized that um, that was just a phase, like anything in life. It's like the seasons, they're just changing. And we started with this program, with this project, but it was possible because all the parties came together. Ministry of Healthcare, Midwives and Nurses Association, Medicine Faculty, and uh, uh, Medical Chambers. They all saw the possibility of this project bring, bringing to life. And we started, but we knew from the beginning that we just, we don't want to just have a project. We saw the vision that this is how we want it forward. And that's why we started, and this is where I was one of the first nurses, who started 2011 uh, working in this type of uh, project. And the norm was half of a nurse for one general practitioner. And if you were working for two, because I'm a whole person, I work for two, that means ar around, let's say, 4,000 patients. 4,000 patients. And what do I do as a nurse? We have two possibilities. One is 
chronic care management, and the other one is prevention. And what's the funny part of those two? Because they go hand in hand. Okay, we, have, uh, we are managing all those uh, uh, chronic diseases such as diabetes, uh, hypertension, asthma, COPD, depression, osteoporosis, um, coronary uh, diseases and so on. And we also are doing uh, prevention and this is integrated prevention. It can be primary or secondary. In my opinion, I don't believe in primary and secondary, it's just a prevention. We want to prevent something regardless when we do it. Or you are already sick or not, it's always, the aim is always the same. And we start like really uh, early with all the patients who are older than 30 years of age. But if you already have one of those uh, chronic diseases, we all also do those secondary prevention. We are always trying to find if there is something that we don't know yet and uh, if we can prevent something from happening. And how can we do that? Not alone. I can't do that on my own. Of course, I, ha I've, I have been, and all those nurses have been additionally educated with 100 hours of different modules that we could start working in this type of uh, practice. Um, but we are really uh, in, uh, in charge of uh, independent decision making. Uh, what I mean by that, that uh, I can decide what kind of um, blood uh, results I want to see, what, uh, I, if I'm doing ECG, what does that mean? But I'm not a doctor. I don't decide what kind of diagnosis I see on the ECG. I just need to know, is this healthy or not? And if I come to a moment where I see this, this is not healthy or it's different, I need to decide what I'm going to do. Is it good enough that I just, uh, talk with patient or send him to maybe, um, we have health promotion centers in Slovenia where we have different workshops, I can send my patient there, or I need to make an appointment for this patient that he sees his general practitioner, or is it so serious that he needs to see his general practitioner today? And that I wouldn't cross my competences uh, it, it's quite easy not to do so. Next slide, please. Because we have a really good protocols or guidelines, maybe, so to call it. And it's, it's everything, it's, it's written for a specific disease, what, what, uh, what can I do, what kind of results I need, uh, what do I need to do if I see that and this and so on and so forth. And basically, I'm just working to my limit and then from this limit on is somebody else somebody else's job. Because we had a lot of fear for some, from some doctors who were like specialists in diabetes and stuff, because they were afraid like, am I going to do his job? But as I mentioned, I'm not a doctor. I have different knowledge and different experiences. And this is where I can, and we can basically support the other team's work. And this is also the second slide is showing the other uh, the other part of these protocols, we have all of them for all the diseases that I showed you before and also for the prevention. And this is because our prevention is really big. We are using standardized questionnaires about lifestyle, eating habits, um, smoking, drinking, depression, everything. It's a really big and really um, it gets into the every pore of this patient. And you really get to know your patients, how they live. All the, all the family basically, because there are more of them uh, have like the whole family in the general practitioner that you work for. Basically, like similar with the community nurse. And the community nurses are going to do basically the same, but a little bit we adapted this prevention because they're working on patient home, not as me as an office. They're going to do this, this also the same, this big prevention checkup. And the next slide will show you, um, this, is, this is just in one insert from one poster that we took to uh, Paris, to the, uh, one congress, where we show some data. You can see here, because um, before we started working in this pr um, project, we didn't know the population that we had before. And with this type of work, we now know what our population is, how many people have COPD, how many people have asthma and so on and so forth. And then when you know what the population has, you know the needs. You can plan the work 
that's why it's really good to have this type of works. Um, and also, uh, we have now registers of chronic diseases. Before, we didn't have them. Uh, and we also, maybe the last column, uh, we see the prevention um, numbers. And that means that this, these are newly diagnosed patients because of those prevention being done at the nurse in general practitioner office. And uh, uh, the second uh, row is maybe also interesting. Uh, it's about, it's talking about diabetes, diabetic patients. And uh, it was one research, 10 cities were, uh, from, uh, in Slovenia were included. And it's basically talking about, um, I think you call it Langzeitzucker. Um, how many patients did we measure uh, this uh, HB1C per year? And from the beginning, we measured just 14,000 people, people's diabetic people, um, uh, this um, parameter. But in 2018, it was already uh, nearly seven, uh, 27,000 patients. So we knew more. Every year we knew more. But not just that. Okay, we measured something. But the second column is really interesting. How many people of those because of uh, our intervention, had this lung side sucker lower as 7%, and that means well managed. And the numbers in 2015 were 9,500, but 2018 was 22,500. And this is with a lot of interventions and uh, with a lot of working together. This is what's the primary care level is all about, as Mr. Everest mentioned, and this is really important. And I would like to take you back in time again, because I can't leave you in 2011, because then you will all play Lotto, and that's not fair. And if I take you back today, where we stand, I have to use from Ms. Kluge, because we had our conversation, and one good sentence came forward that maybe, because you are in the bridge of changes in Germany, just step forward from German fear to German courage. And don't be afraid of changes. And one also very famous nurse, Florence Nightingale, once said, everybody say that something can be done till somebody come and does it. And like Nike, just do it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mitka, very interesting. Just do it. Just ask us. Just do it. Gibt es Fragen? Do you have questions? In the audience, yeah, over there? In the chat, perhaps? Yeah, we first take in the audience here. Yes. Thank you for your presentation. Um, you said your um, community nurse was the first bathing your baby. So I asked myself, do you have midwives? Um, so um, do the community health nurses replace um, professions that we have separate in Germany? Or are they really working together? This is a really good question also from, for a Slovenian country. Um, the idea in this age is a lot of discussion. Of course, it, uh, it would be really wise to have a midwives. And some, in some regions, we also have some midwives. But mm, it's, in majority, there are just uh, registered nurses who are doing this type of work. Uh, but it's an idea to maybe, of course, uh, to start working also with uh, midwives. But the problem may be it's in a different way of educating them in the university level. But yeah, that's also one of ideas that we are having now. And it's a discussion that it, it would be really good to maybe also have them in the teams. Mm -hmm. But not, not now. Mm -hmm. We have another question in the chat. Are you visiting these 4,000 people at their homes? And if so, how often did you see them? Thank you for the question. Maybe I, I wasn't clear enough. Um, I'm not visiting nobody. I am station, uh, I'm sitting in the office. It's really pleasant. The one who is visiting uh, people uh, is a community nurse. So we are basically uh, working all together. How I mean um, uh, this function like, um, I can invite all of those 4,000 patients to see me, but some of them are not able to come. 
And this is where the community nurse is really important and crucial. I'm not seeing 4,000 patients, they are seeing me. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. So we have a question here in the audience. Yes, um, you mentioned something about the quality management in your job. Who's providing the scripts and uh, scripts you are using? Uh, you meant the protocols? Yeah, stuff like uh, that. The protocols we, uh, were, were done before we started even working. They were done in cooperation, uh, Midwestern Nurses Association and uh, medical chambers. So it's like national wide? Not definitely. In it's, in, it's on the de national level, definitely. Okay, thanks. Very interesting. It's not one idea and one. one yeah, because yeah, I, like uh, so, so I, I work in home care nursing. Sorry? So I work in home care nursing here and like every uh, single home care nursing is doing. Um, his own quality management, which makes no sense, oh, yeah. I think, because <laughs> it, it needs uh, a lot of resources. So, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> this is maybe it's easy because we are a small country, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't see it that, that way. What, what I, th uh, what I think, what's really crucial, was really crucial, because we had a clear vision. We don't want it to be a project. We, but it's a. This is now a little bit on the joke side. Maybe it's a sneaky way how to start to implement something, just for an for idea or something. Yeah, how clever, thanks. Thank you so much. Another question in the chat. Um, how did you manage uh, critical moments between doctors or specialized doctors, diabetolo uh, diabetology doctors? How did you manage it with critical? Uh, one of them wa was definitely my beautiful smile. Um, the other one was, um, <laughs> we are a profession. We were educated to do stuff. We know how to do things. We, we are not somebody just who just came along. I, uh, we had a different, uh, not just a university level of education. We had those additional modules. And we had from the upbringing this project, we had so many conf conferences where we were teaching the new nurses who were coming like monthly or every half of a year, we, we added some new ones. We were really working hand in hand. That's why if you have a critic for me, I always like criticism, but it has to be structure. And if it's based on nothing, just on fear, I can quickly explain why you, need, you don't need to be afraid of something, because I'm a professional. I, um, especially as a nurse, I'm not here to do harm, I'm here to do good. Mm -hmm. Another question? Yes. Thank you. Right moment for applause, huh? Yes. There I are smile. <laughs> there are any are there any extra specialists like you for the child health care? Um we have also additional nurse in pediatrics, in community nurse. Uh, the the base is always the same. It's a doctor and this secondary uh, high school educated nurse, but we are also striving into the way that we are just going to have nurses um, who are educated in the universal, uh, university level, not universal, but university level. Um, we have those nurses also in pediatrics, and they are also in charge of preventions, uh, vaccines and stuff, but this is also a quite an old thing, because we really have an old primary yeah. care. Yeah. yeah, okay, thank you. So we have a question here in the audience. Yeah, first of all, thank you very much for your smile. Thank you. <laughs> and your uh, yeah, it's horizon broadening uh, presentation. Um, I want to talk about the protocols because I think it is very difficult to find the right border between nurses and physicians um, because they all have different competencies. So my question is, is this protocol relevant for your whole country or is it relevant only for one, for one region? No, it's for the, for the whole country. It's country-based. For every nurse who is working, as I was working, it's, it's the same protocol. But I don't find it hard to divide those two um, uh, workloads because maybe, for example, to better understand it, I have a patient. Um, I invited him for preventive checkup. And, oh, geez, I see the blood sugar sugar is really high, and he was healthy. I don't know. Let's say um, 7 something, 7.2. And I know what to do according to protocols. I don't need to be in panic and call the doctor. Oh, my God, this sugar is high. I send him again. I explain what to do. I send him again back to the uh, lab. He does it again. Then I see. And then I see 
again, some number, let's say seven and something. And then I know what to do. I know that he's a diabetic patient, but I'm not a doctor. I'm not giving the diagnosis. I explain how this is going to work now. I make an appointment. It's not an urgent appointment, so he can have it in two or three days a week. And he goes and sees the doctor who is saying, I am sorry, this is diabetes. We need to start med uh, uh, medication, yes or no. This is on uh, his terms and according to the results that we have. And then when he's well managed, he came, uh, he came back to see me. And then I'm managing him to a moment where I don't know because of different reasons, his blood sugar is way off. And then I'm like, okay, thank you very much. Back to the doctor. That's why I, I find it like really, it's not, it's not that hard. It's really not that hard. Uh, it's just, uh, we have to trust. I think this is really important. I need to trust you. I, I always work with only good doctors. I, I'm, I've, I've been really blessed. And I always trusted those doctors when I came with something that it was bothering me or it was difficult for me. I always knew that he will back me up. And he always knew that I will always come and wave a red flag if something was horribly off. And it really helps the doctor because I know so many stuff uh, uh, from the patient that this, it's also sometimes crucial for your decision making as a doctor. Clear borders. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. And the last two questions over here in the chat. How can you convince doctors um, that they work together with uh, community health nurses, even if they don't have to? Um, yeah, we also have. I also I had to do some convincing, but not with words, with my work Great. and the numbers. And you have to, as it was mentioned, researches showing your what did what did you do. What, what's the benefit of your work? If I'm just bragging and there's nothing to show, but I'm oh, I will always believe it's in uh, my good work and the knowledge that I possess uh, that it's persuading doctors why this is a way forward. Mm -hmm. We had we had a lot of people who were not believing that this is possible. Really? Yeah, definitely. That's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I think. But this is it. how it is. But you in just life. do it, huh? Yeah, we just do it, like night. You just do it. Don't, yeah, don't hesitate. But you have to be, you know, if I would say everything that was wrong and it was hard, it would be a really depress a depress a depressive like interaction here. But we have to be a little bit more focused on the positive side. And of course, the bad things always come along. But if we know, if we have a clear vision, I think the pa path is quite easy. Yeah, quite easy. There's another question. Uh, are you already using telemedicine to support your work? Oh, I wish. I wish. <laughs> I wish we would. We had quite some problems during COVID time. Um, I have to mention the community nurses were really cruci crucial in COVID time. They were, we were all, all in lockdowns, uh, sitting at home, not being able to see a doctor, but they were still visiting every patient that they were in charge for. So head off uh, to them. Um, not yet. What we established when the COVID came was like telephonic, um, uh, telephonic contact. Now I'm a little bit in Deutsch. We were conne contacting, contacting those patients with the telephone, but it's not the same. And, but it was something. So no, not yet, but we are on the bridge of it. We have some of those e-stuff already going on for ages, like um, prescribing therapy, uh, some uh, results coming back to us, uh, uh, referrals and so on, uh, but we are, we are uh, going there, steady but slowly. <laughs> so work in progress. Definitely. Always. Thank you very much for your visit here in Berlin. So you are still with us? Definitely. For the next hours. Um, so everybody who uh, has a question here, you are open to it? Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank Vielen you. Dank. Meta. Metka. Uh -huh.